Today we are going to take a deep dive into image vulnerability scanning using Claire. Hey what's up everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Aleš Nosek and I am the software practitioner located in San Diego, California, helping you navigate the world of Kubernetes. Claire is a container image vulnerability scanner. It is used in Red Hat Quay and also in Red Hat Advanced Cluster Security for Kubernetes product. Claire can also be used as a standalone scanner in your CI CD pipeline. In this video, we are going to take a look at how Claire works and also what kind of scan results you can expect from it. Claire project comes with a very good documentation and I will include a link down below the video. Claire comes with a modular design. It is the Claire core part of Claire, which implements the image scanning functionality. Claire is able to detect vulnerabilities in images which use one of the supported Linux distributions. Also, Claire is able to detect vulnerabilities in Python packages, which were, for example, installed using pip install. Both Python package formats, egg and wheel, are supported. For images which don't use one of the supported distributions, Claire won't be of any help because Claire won't be able to find any vulnerabilities in such images. Note that in this video, I'm using Claire Core. Claire Core is the core part of Claire, and it is sufficient for our deep dive today. However, if you are going to use Claire for scanning images, then I would recommend to, instead of Claire Core, focus on Claire, as it provides a more complete solution. And I will also include a link to the Claire documentation down below the video. Let me now walk you through the image vulnerability scanning process. In the middle of this diagram, I'm depicting Claire Core. Claire Core consists of two modules, lib index and lib vulnerability. Each of the modules run in its own daemon and exposes its own API. In the diagram, you can see that both daemons are talking to the same Postgres database. However, those daemons are not sharing any data through the database. That means that uh, you could also deploy each of the daemons with its own dedicated database. On the left side of the diagram, I'm showing Claire Core tool. Claire Core Tool is a client which drives the entire image scanning process. Before you can start scanning images, you will need to bring up the Claire Core services. Right after the lib vulnerability service starts up, it will download the latest vulnerability information from various databases, which are provided by the distributors and which are publicly available on the internet. Lib vulnerability lib vulnerability will store this vulnerability information in the Postgres database and also it will check for any updates of the vulnerability information every 30 minutes. In the case that you are running Claire Core in an environment with no internet access, you can use the Claire Core tool to separately download the vulnerability information and then use the Claire Core tool to import it into your offline Claire Core instance. Before we continue describing the image vulnerability scanning process, let's uh, take a quick look at how the vulnerability information that is consumed by Claire, how it looks like. As I mentioned before, Claire downloads the vulnerability information from various publicly available databases. Those databases are maintained by individual distributors. And in this list, you can see where those databases are located. As an example, let's take a look at the vulnerability information provided by Red Hat. And for that, I will follow this link in a new tab. Red Hat, as many other Linux distributors, provides their vulnerability information in the format called Open Vulnerability and Assessment Language. This is a XML based format and the vulnerabilities described inside are machine readable. To get the up-to-date list of vulnerabilities, I will follow this uh, streams directory. 
and here we can find vulnerability information for different Red Hat Enterprise Linux versions. And if I go inside, you can see that there are also vulnerability information for other Red Hat products. So I will download this uh, RHEL 8 vulnerability information so that we can peek inside. So I downloaded the Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8 vulnerability information and I also decompressed the archive already. You can see that we are looking at an XML file of the size 11 megabytes and inside of that file we can find a list of vulnerabilities which have been identified in Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8 so far. So let's now take a look at one of the definitions of vulnerabilities in this list. And uh, there is not that many critical vulnerabilities. So this one from this vulnerability in HA proxy, which is critical, stands out. This vulnerability that affects Red Hat products was uh, assigned a Red Hat security advisory number by Red Hat. And also this vulnerability is included in the common vulnerability and exposure database, which is a industry-wide catalog of vulnerabilities. I will now scroll down to the end of the vulnerability definition. And here at the end of the definition, we can find a set of criterias. And these criterias tell us under which conditions a given system is vulnerable. If I read the inner part of this definition, then it says that uh, a system is vulnerable if we have an HA proxy package installed, which whose version is less than this one. And at the same time, this package was signed by a Red Hat release key. So it is a Red Hat package, Red Hat provided package. And then there is an or condition. At the same time that we have that HA proxy with a specific version less than this number, we also have either Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8 installed or we have Red Hat CoreOS 4 installed. What I don't understand about this definition is the auto part. For some reason we are ORing uh, this entire compound condition. We are ORing it with the condition of Red Hat Enterprise Linux must be installed. And so that would mean that whenever you have Red Hat Enterprise Linux installed, then you are vulnerable or you are vulnerable if you have the HA proxy with a specific version and at the same time you are running on Linux 8 or CoreOS 4. So I'm not sure why this outer part of this condition is here and it doesn't make sense to me. If you know uh, why it is there, I will be very curious to learn. And also I think other folks which are watching this video will be curious as well. Um, please uh, leave your comments down below the video. Overall, when Claire parses these criteria, it will understand that the container image is vulnerable in the case that Claire will find an HA proxy package installed. And this HA proxy package is of version lower than this particular version. We can also say that this vulnerability has been fixed in the HA proxy package of exactly this version. Now that we understand how Claire receives the information about vulnerabilities in different distributions and packages, let's go back to our discussion about the image vulnerability scanning process. After the lib vulnerability downloaded and parsed all the vulnerability information from various databases and stored them into the Postgres database, we can now use the CC tool to submit a container image for scanning. Claire core tool takes as a parameter the location of the image in the registry. In our case, we are going to be scanning an image which is stored in Quay.io and the repository where it is stored in is called deep dive into Claire. Claire core tool will contact the image registry and download an image descriptor which uh, contains metadata about the image and especially it contains the information about individual image layers. CC2 will from this information create an image manifest. Image manifest is a JSON file which uh, includes just the information about what are the layers in the image and where they can be downloaded from. Next, Claire Core tool will send the image manifest 
as a index request to the lib index. Lib index will read the location of indi individual image layers which are supposed to be scanned from the manifest and will download all those layers from the image registry. After that, lib index will perform the image scanning. The goal of the image scanning is to find out what kind of content is stored in the image. And by the content, I mean what distribution, what repositories, and what packages are installed on the image. Note that libindex doesn't deal with the vulnerability information at all. The only task of libindex is to really discover the existing content on the image. The result of image indexing is an index report, and this report is sent back to the client. This uh, report includes the information about the discovered content in the image. Libindex is also going to store this information into its Postgres database. This is an optimization because next time Libindex is asked to scan the same layers which it already scanned before, it will, instead of going to the image registry, downloading the layers and performing the scanning, it will instead be able to find the previous results in its database and use those results to construct a new index report and send it quickly back to the client. After the ClareCore tool received the index report, it will in the next step send this index report as a matching request to the lib vulnerability. Lib vulnerability will inspect the index report which contains the full information about what content was located on the image. Lib vulnerability will match this content with the information from its vulnerability database. And based on this matching, lib vulnerability will produce a vulnerability report and send it back to the client. The vulnerability report contains the information from the index report it means the content of the image, as well as the list of all vulnerabilities which pertain to that content. In the next section of the video, I'm now going to demonstrate this image scanning process. I cloned the ClareCore Git repository, and I will include the link to this repo down below the video. As a first step, I'm going to install the ClareCore tool. So I will type go install and the tool is located in the CC tool directory. So now I have my CC tool ready. Next, I'm going to start the ClareCore services, lib index and lib vulnerability. Before you do that, make sure that you merge the following pull request that I created. This pull request fixes running ClareCore services in Podman containers and I will include the link to this pull request down below the video. Now I'm ready to start the Claire Core services. And for that, I will issue make podman dev up. This will create a pod in podman. And this pod runs the two Claire Core services, lib vulnerability as well as lib index. And also this pod runs a uh, Claire Core database, the Postgres database. Lib vulnerability will start downloading the vulnerability information from public databases, and it takes about 20 minutes for it to download it. So I'm going to pause the video here. After about 20 minutes, we can peek into the Claire's database. And if I take a look at the tables defined there, we can see that there are several tables, but by far the largest table is the vulnerability table with the size of 5.8 gigabytes. This table holds the data which was downloaded from the public vulnerability databases. We can see that there are many, many rows in this table describing the individual vulnerabilities in various distributions, repositories, and packages. To test the vulnerability scanning, I created a container image where I included the vulnerable version of HAProxy. You can find the Docker file to build this image in the Git repository, which I created for this video as well. And uh, I will post the link down below the video. 
and the docker file is very simple it is based on the red hat's universal base image and it will install a vulnerable version of ha proxy now i can perform the image vulnerability scanning i use the cc tool and ask for a vulnerability report for the image which i uploaded in the meantime into the quay registry and because this is the first time this image is going to be scanned by this Claire instance. Claire instance will need to download all the image layers and do the, the scanning. So that will take a while and so I will pause the video here. After a short while the image vulnerability scanning is complete. In the output you can see that we discovered two different vulnerabilities in the HA proxy package. The first vulnerability is the well-known critical vulnerability which we have seen before and in addition to that one there is also one more moderate vulnerability in the output you can see that the vulnerability information is duplicated and the reason for that is that the same vulnerable package was found in two different red hat repositories to get more detailed results we can ask the clear core tool to dump the image manifest as well as index report and vulnerability report it can dump it for us into the current directory and for that I will set the dump to true as you can see the image scanning completed very quickly because Claire was using the results from the previous scans and the image manifest as well as the index and Vulnerability report are now located in the current directory. If you are interested to review them, I will add them to the to the Git repository, and you can review them there. Before we summarize today's video, I wanted to emphasize two points about Claire image vulnerability scanning. Point number one: Claire is a static image vulnerability scanner. It will discover all the content, the packages which are installed on your images and it will match that content with the information from the vulnerability databases. Claire, however, cannot know if the given vulnerable code is actually executed in runtime. In today's example, I installed a vulnerable HA proxy package. Claire discovered this vulnerability and also included that vulnerability in its image report. However, because this HA proxy is never started from that image, it doesn't really impose an immediate risk. Based on the results from Claire, you will need to perform your own analysis to decide whether the vulnerabilities found by Claire are actually a risk for you or not. Point number two that I wanted to emphasize is that Claire matches the content found in the image with the vulnerability information provided by individual distributors. As such, Claire will only be able to find vulnerabilities in the distribution packages. If you are creating your own packages, then Claire won't be able to find any vulnerabilities there. Let's review what we covered in this video. We discussed the image vulnerability scanning process using Claire. The process starts with downloading the vulnerability information this vulnerability information is provided by individual distributors and this vulnerability information only covers vulnerabilities in the distribution packages. The second step of the vulnerability scanning is image scanning. At this stage, Claire will discover content which was installed on the image. It will find out what distribution, what, which repositories and what packages were installed. And the last step of the vulnerability scanning is vulnerability matching. At this step, Claire will match the content found in the image with the information from the vulnerability databases. And based on this, it will generate the final vulnerability report. We demonstrated the vulnerability scanning process using an old and vulnerable HA proxy package from the Red Hat Enterprise Linux distribution. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Please feel free to leave your questions or comments down below. If you found this video helpful, 
please consider subscribing so that you are notified whenever I release a new video. Until next time.